Oh um, yeah, that's that's money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> exactly, you know. And, and and the thing is about Wisconsin sports, no one else is doing it. Welcome to the Ike Badgers podcast. My name is Alex Eichstead, your host, former Badger alum myself. And we've got a great show for you guys today. We sit down with Zach Bond, Badgers linebacker, total stud. We're also IKE Badgers on Twitter. Make sure to check us out, hit us with a follow. We'll be talking Rose Bowl until now with Zach Bond on IKE Badgers. Let's get into it. Zach Vaughn, welcome to the show. Great to have you. How Thank you, doing? you. Great to be here. I'm doing well, doing fantastic in this time of quarantine. Yeah, it's definitely a unique time for a college athlete like yourself, transitioning from the college athlete to the pro <laughs> athlete. Let's just start start off right there. When the season ended, what 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 changed? How uh, how have things been different yeah the biggest thing was just like right after the rose bowl i'm no longer a a student or an athlete i'm unemployed so um the work really started then and then i took five days off just to get my mind right for the whole process and get ready for that and then i moved out to arizona to train was training there with uh quintez and uh jt yeah it was it was it was good to have familiar faces while getting working at the same time yeah, absolutely. I uh just talking about your jump that you made from your junior to senior season. Your junior season, you had sixty two tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, two and a half sacks. And then your senior year, we talked and you had big goals. Your senior year, mm-hmm. you pretty much I mean, I'm just gonna read off your stats and then I wanna hear how you view your senior season, but you went off for seventy five tackles. 19 and a half tackles for loss, 12 and a half sacks. You had one of the cleanest pick sixes I've seen <laughs> in college football against Michigan State, and then a couple of forced fumbles. So, in your eyes, was this kind of what you envisioned happening, or was did you even exceed your expectations, or is it just you just trusted the process? What what went through your mind? Yeah, like you said, this whole thing has been a, a big process. Like I wasn't the highest recruited I wasn't the a five-star recruit coming out of high school I was a quarterback really an athlete um, just trying to make it my whole career has really been a process and a development and people don't know but I really didn't play up until my junior year with that being my, my first real season playing the position and uh, that was kind of my transitional year for me just to learn the position learn the nuances learn the play continue to learn the playbook and then the next year I just um, my only goal was just to, to, to be one of the best in the conference and, um, because I knew I had it in me athletically and physically. And then just putting it all together. Um, I spent a lot of time doing NFL study, getting in the weight room, studying my playbook, and it just all came together for me. I'd say I exceeded my expectations at the beginning of the season as I was just trying to get drafted no matter where it was. I was just trying to get, um, all Big Ten in any way I could, whether that was honorable mention or third team, it didn't matter, but um, just always trying to be better than I was before. Yeah, you uh, definitely, sometimes it's amazing what you can do when you put your your mind to it, and it's always good to have those tangible goals, kind of like you said, you wanted to be all conference, all Big Ten, and then next thing you know, you're all America, so... (laughs) That that's that's one way to you know put your name on the map. When yeah. it when it came from the junior to senior season, I think one thing that you know you talked about how you did a lot of film study about how you hit the weight room really hard. But one thing I kind of noticed that maybe goes often unsaid about your game is your leadership. Is on the field in the locker room, it really seemed like this last year the Badgers team and especially that defense really had good camaraderie and also looked to kind of you and Chris um do you want to talk about kind of how you kind of became more of a leader (laughs) yeah so obviously the year but 2018 we lost a lot of um defensive leaders 
You look at the Dakota Dixon, TJ Edwards, Ryan Conley, guys that have played um, on this defense for a really long time. And I knew after that, I knew things needed, things were going to change. And I was then, I was now a senior and um, it was really up to me and Chris being the senior leaders on the defense. And, you know, if you know anything about Chris Orr, he's the you rah, rah um, hype man on the field and he does a great job at that. But um, there was, there, there was a need for, guys being connected inside the locker room, off the field, um, and, and just kind of blurring the line between upperclassmen and lowerclassmen. I think that's what, what really did it for, for us as a defense and us as a team. Yeah, and you kind of served as that connection point between Chris, who's the senior um, outspoken leader, and then some of the yep. younger guys who can – I guess, look up to you and maybe relate to you a little more. And then that brings everyone together. It was uh, definitely one of the more, it was one of the most fun seasons I, I had uh, watching the team play because just, you know, when you see the chemistry, chemistry is what really gets me ex- excited about a team. Yeah. And this year, even though it started off without, you know, the press or without the hype that had in years past, I really think that this team proved that it was they were under you guys were underdogs and uh yeah really um came together so we'll fast forward a little bit so you're working out with chris uh chris um you're working out with quintez and jt in arizona just trying to get your feet wet as like you said an unemployed you know Mm -hmm. guy who's about to turn pro uh what did anyone take you under their under your wing? You mentioned guys in the past like TJ Edwards, Ryan Connolly, TJ Watt. Uh, he was a Badger. You also have Joe Schobert. Did any of these mm-hmm. pros kind of reach out to you, or maybe any? Did you have a mentor kind of help you along this process? That's that's the that's the thing going to Wisconsin, and there's like a real, especially the linebacker core. There's a real mentorship that goes on. While you're at Wisconsin, and then and then even after, I I think immediately when I moved to Arizona, it wasn't me reaching out to the older guys. It was them more so reaching out to me and asking me if I had any questions for them about the whole process and what was going on or what to expect. Uh, Daria Gumbawale was was a big help. Joe Schobert reached out. T.J. Edwards, T.J. Watt, all those guys um, were willing to to continue to have me under their wing and as I transitioned to the NFL and went through those life changes too. Yeah. I bet that's, uh, that's just comforting, you know, having someone who's been there before kind of Mm -hmm. help lead the way. Was there, was there any part that was a difficult, really difficult choice for you, such as hiring an agent or um, maybe deciding on, how to prepare for the combine. Was there anything that you really just thought was more difficult than most people ex- would expect? Um, as far as like training for the combine and stuff, it's all familiar stuff. It's, it's just you working out and you get to do it more often than you, than you did before. And that that's fun. And that as an athlete, you should like doing stuff like that. You should like the grind and, and yeah. doing what it takes. Cause really you get that opportunity one time in your life. You, if if you're um complaining and um or or saying i'm too i'm sore to work out right now um you're you're missing you're missing a big part of it and then when it came down to picking an agent fortunately enough for me a lot of former badgers agents reached out to me and i was able to ask them questions about um how how their their agent was or so i ended up going with tj watts agent with uh caa Interesting. Very cool. That's uh keep the the Badger linebacker core line <laughs> going. I love that. I love that. Let's sure. uh, let's talk a little more about the combine for for someone like me who who has no idea or for a lot of other players that are still in college. What is the whole combine like? Are you so you you fly in, you mm-hmm. do they have a they pick you up at the airport they have a hotel for you guys are you staying with the other players or what is this no. uh tell me a little about this this whole couple days so it was it was a crazy experience and um guys that have done it before kind of told me what to expect but 
you don't really ex- know what you're getting yourself into until you're there and experience it for yourself. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so so yeah, they pick you up from the airport, and and let me mind you, everything's a test. Everything's you're doing is being evaluated. Um, so like when we were picked up from the airport, they had one of the NFL team scouts as the driver <laughs> of of the van. So they he was looking in the rear view mirror the whole time. Like, so then other teams will ask him like, who's the funny guy? Who's the quiet guy? What yeah. guys were outspoken? Psych- was, was anything bad said? Yeah. Yeah. It's a psych test and, too. <laughs> and, and it was a, it was a psych test the whole time. And, um, everything you were doing, how you were walking, were you up too late at night? People were taking note in, in referring back to the other teams. So, it was an intense situation, but definitely one worthwhile. Yeah, you uh, you did really well. I remember uh, your your bench press. You got twenty four reps. That's outstanding. Your yeah. forty came as four six five, absolutely lightning for a linebacker. And then, I mean, even your vertical, your broad jump, really impressive showing where you were named to the all combine first team on defense. Was it, did you, have you done the 40 yard dash a lot? Did you kind of know where you were going to be? Have you been practicing how many mm-hmm. reps? Um, did you find when you're actually at the combine that you performed how you wanted? Or did you even, again, exceed your own expectations? Yeah, I think we we had been running 40s the whole time while training. We had been benching the whole time while training. I'll tell you the first day um, we got to Exos in Phoenix, they had us do all of our testing. So we did the bench, okay. we did the vertical jump. And I significantly significantly increased all my numbers from the first day at Exos. Mind you, that's right after a season, right after mm-hmm. playing in the Rose Bowl. So I my bench was probably the most impressive. I, I the first day I benched seventeen reps at Exos and then um ended up working my way up to twenty four. So that that's a big improvement. Yeah, that that definitely shows a lot. Um about just your overall, you're kind of this overall do it all linebacker, which is, I think is very intriguing for NFL scouts because not only do you have the off the field, you have the leadership qualities, you have the sacks, the numbers, but you also have this skill set that they just must be drooling over in the fact that you kind of are this, you, you know, you have a lot of positions you could play in the linebacking core. When the team is drafting you, Zach, what what are they getting um, out of Zach Bond? Well, just like you said, versatility is is my main thing. Yes, I played on the line um, my whole time at Wisconsin, but um, I'm I'm able and willing to do do it all, like you said, um, and that's just it—a do it all linebacker that that that's tough, gritty, smart, and dependable. Uh, you can always trust me to be in the right spot at the right time. Um, always be trust me to be in my playbook and, and doing the right things off the field as well. Yeah, that's uh the whole package, the whole package um for sure. There's uh one one aspect of your game and I mentioned a little earlier that interception you had against Michigan State when you when you pretty much just I I forget who if that was Lewerke or that you picked off or what, yeah. it was Lombard yeah. Um he was actually considered one of the best passers in the Big Ten at the time of that game when that was going on. Oh, really? And you, I, you remember you jumped that route. We got to see your soft hands, mm-hmm. and you knew what to do with the ball. Is that uh, something you had been waiting for for a while? Um, <laughs> does it, did that take you back to your high school days? Or <laughs> it did, it did, and. Man, that's every every defensive player's dream to to have the ball in your hands and and be running <laughs> clear open for a touchdown. Me and Chris were talking about it after, and and he had <laughs> he had a pick six versus Nebraska, uh, twenty seventeen, I want to say, and mm-hmm. uh, we talked we were talking about it, and and it was just like, what do you what do you think when you had when like when you catch the ball and you're and we both agree that you're just thinking, holy shit, I have the ball in my hand. Like, I really have the <laughs> ball in my hand and I'm running. Like, and, and that really brought, brought me, yeah, I'm going end zone all, all the time. And it, it really brought me back to my high school quarterback days when I was running 60, 70 yard touchdowns. 
Yeah, you looked like like you looked like a natural, and there was if you watch the highlight, <laughs> there was no one gonna catch you. <laughs> no, oh no, no and I was running as fast as I could. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the end zone so fast, man. It it, it it was unbelievable. So that was that was definitely one of my favorite moments of the year, just because it, it was even unexpected to see. You know, you you also get the ball in your hands, and yeah. you knew what to do with it, which was really cool. So, going back to kind of the combine, it goes on. Did you did you meet any friends there that you didn't expect that you would get along with, or any guys uh, that you really vibed with? Throughout this whole process, really, I've been able to meet a, a whole bunch of guys that really have the same same goals and aspirations as, as myself, and to see, meet the guys and meet the personalities of the guys whose names have been on the, the lists of all these all American lists or all big 10 or all conference and, and get to meet them. It's really a cool experience. And, and that's really what I'm look, looking forward to moving forward to. Yeah. Because these are probably going to be a lot of guys you'll be seeing in the future as well. So mm -hmm. good to, good to, I guess, you know, form some camaraderie, you know, it's a brotherhood at the end of the day. You guys are all, yeah, yeah it, it, it's a great sport. So yeah. combine ends, you know, you had a great showing. Now it's a little more target on the pro day where how did things change, I guess, your focus from the combine to the pro day? Did you have any different uh, things you wanted to, I guess, showcase or were you just looking – Tell me a little bit about your mindset going into pro day. Yeah, so actually rolling back the clock, the way they had the combat combine set up was you do your jumps, you do your broad, and then your vert, and then you run the 40. And then mm -hmm. after that, immediately following, you do all the position work. So you're by, by the end of the position work, your legs are dog tired. And then yeah. after all that, they make you um, – then you do your pro agility and your three cone. And a lot of guys just skipped out because their legs were so tired. And they're just say, whatever, I'll run it at, at pro day. Actually, what I, that's what I should have done. Instead, I, I ran it, ran a kind of a sloppy time, kind of just trying to get it over with. And that was my mistake, but I was able to redo that, my pro agility at pro day and get a lot better time. And then after the pro day, after the pro agility, um, it was just really just a time for me to, watch Chris Orr and all the other guys that I worked so hard with at Wisconsin do their thing and showcase their skills. And then I did the position work there as well. Yeah. I thought it was a absolute robbery that Chris didn't get a combine invite. Man. Cause he, uh, I mean, we don't have to go too deep, but I, I just still don't understand how a man can have that many sacks as an inside linebacker. Yeah. Yeah, and not, not I, get a chance to show it. I just don't get it either. I mean, I was I was at the combine looking at the other linebackers that were selected to go, and um, obviously kept my thought, thoughts to myself then. But yeah, he yeah. definitely got gypped of a of an important opportunity for him. But he yeah, but he did was, really well at the pro day, and he killed it. And um, really proud of him for pushing through the, the adversity that that was. Yeah, he, he's he's kind of always uh, had a, a lot of adversity, um, kind of yeah. like you in your career, you know, a, a couple big, an injury, you know, um, that you guys had to fight through, kind of mm -hmm. been brothers through this all. You were roommates at one point, and I guess, do you guys still talk on the daily? Or are you guys, uh, what's the current status? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're all, we'll be brothers forever, and um, he'll be in my wedding one day, and I mean, he, he just works so hard and that's kind of where we're at now is he's back in Texas working his tail off and I'm here doing the same and just kind of expecting, um, each other to be working towards, towards these goals that we want and, and, and do that. Yeah. I think it's, uh, when you have someone kind of motivating you at, uh, at that competitive, but also br almost brotherly level, it really brings out the best. And I mean, it almost seemed like you guys had a competition this year, you know, yeah. getting sacks or making big plays. What was there? Yeah. Was there something going on? on <laughs> there was definitely a competition. Uh, I forgot what game it was. Maybe, uh, 
what was it? I know I knew we had a competition Kent State. Uh, who would get the more, most sacks and like we would come back, we would get one and then come back to the sideline like, yeah, I got one, you got two, what you gonna do? Like, <laughs> and it, and the, the friendly competition was so good and, and other guys picked up on it as well and also, also joined in. So that was cool, cool to uh, be a part of. Yeah, it had to be inspiring. I mean, if I, if I was seeing guys go out there and pretty much do what they wanted, and that I mean that would that would just get me even more inspired to you know try and be a part of that competition if I was another linebacker um, on the Badgers as well. So I thought that was uh, really cool. Just wanted to touch base a little bit on your buddy Chris and uh, see what he was up to. But we'll uh, we'll come back to pre-draft preparation. It's a strange time right now because pro day is over, the combine is over. The NFL has announced that the draft is going to remain on schedule. What is, I guess, this next month looking like for Zach Bond? Yeah, of course it's got to be my draft class that the, the coronavirus has to come come and <laughs> mess everything up. But um, so right now is kind of the what what was 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 the process where I would go to NFL. T- teams facilities and be there for a day they're called 40 visits so they pick 40 guys to um or maybe it's 30 i'm not quite sure to come and um just kind of get a a better sense of who they are as a guy and um, test their football iq and um, do that so i had a few of those visits set up and it's also a time where coaches can come here and uh, we can get in the film room or they can work me out um or get on the board and I, I was fortunate enough to have a few of those visits knocked out, but obviously with the, the coronavirus going around, um, the travel plans have been canceled. So, um, a lot of FaceTime calls and, and, and doing what you can with that. Yeah. That, uh, it definitely, it kind of makes, I guess, the draft for the NFL teams, they really have to, I guess, have to look at your results from the combine and from your senior season which I think in your favor bode really well Yeah. Um, for other guys, not so much who maybe were relying on more of the individual workouts for teams that kind of showcase yep. what they had rather than the stats they put up. So I think it, that's positive. Is there, are there any last uh, things you, I guess, you know, you're, you don't really know where you're going to end up. You, oh. you're, you're going to be home for roughly, you know, maybe a month or maybe even more, depending on how long this, this virus hangs around. Are there, uh, is the plan just then to have the draft party at home or what What are you thinking so far? Yeah, I don't really know. I, w- I was before this whole virus thing kicked off. I was planning a, a, like a decent sized party, but uh, obviously you can't have more than 10 or however many people together in one spot. So got to narrow it down to my my family and friends that have been there through it all and kind of keep the keep the ones closest to celebrate that moment yeah that'll be just as special oh yeah man and you're gonna have the guys like myself like kj like uh pretty much everyone that's you know been a part of this rise just yep dude it's gonna be a great moment for the whole team you know (laughs) we're we're all gonna be celebrating and watching even if it's remotely you know so for sure it'll it's, be just as just as special yeah and whoever gets you is going to be definitely happy they picked you i'm uh i'm really pushing i really i really think you know you're still undervalued and i think badgers in general are extremely undervalued it's it's shocking to yeah. me how many pros how many good pros came from wisconsin and yet every year it seems like these guys still get, you know, for some reason they're not uh, ranked higher or projected higher based yeah. upon some stigma. Um, for example, we'll talk about, you know, even JT. I mean, what does the guy have to do to get a Heisman invite? That's or... what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I have never seen a back with as good as vision as JT at the college level. Yeah. And, you know, there's even talk 
that he's not the top back in the draft. And so I, I can I don't know what these it, coaches they haven't been watching, obviously. It blo- it blows my mind. But luckily enough, um with the recent line like you said, the recent linebacker success in in the NFL. Um mm-hmm. hopefully it's my year that um they see what Wisconsin linebackers have been able to do at the next level and then they um take a chance on me and uh yeah, because it'll definitely turn out, and they know what they're gonna get. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're gonna get even on teams that don't necessarily need a linebacker. I think that you're just a guy that improves the overall defense. Yeah. Um, you, you have the like, like you said, the versatility. You could, you know, play anywhere. Are there? Is there? You can do multiple formations: the four, three, the three, four. Is there, I guess, in your head, is there an ideal situation where, you know, say, for example, you have a guy next to you that you can learn from, or is there anything going on in your head, or are you just going to let it all just kind of unfold as it as the draft comes? Yeah, with the whole versatility thing, uh, it, it is a big question mark what position I'm, I'm, I'm going to play at the next level, but it's also an opportunity for me to um appeal to to all teams whether it is a 3-4 or 4-3 um it it just broadens that market that I'm available in and it it only it'll only help me in the long run and i i'd say i'm most comfortable playing edge but also no, more than willing to um learn a new position or um ad- adapt however that may be and uh yeah M- most teams yeah. have been looking at me as like a package guy or um, maybe play off the ball first and second down and then get on the ball and rush the passer on third down. It just sounds like a lot of fun opportunities for me. Yeah, I think the edge position is definitely over the last couple of years in the NFL, we've seen GMs make investments. You know, everyone's talking about, can we get a good edge rusher? Uh, the Packers, you know, last year they brought in Darius Smith and Preston Smith. Yep. And it, it, it changed the whole defense. And a lot of teams are also trying to look for their edge rushers. So I think that bodes well in your case. So I'm excited for draft day. I think that would be, you know, a great, a great time. We can all look forward to and celebrate. Just want to, just want to wrap up with what is, what is the Zach Bond doing outside of football? Um, is there like a life right now because you're in the midst of it outside of football? Um, how, how are things going on the outside for you, man? Great, man. Thanks for asking that, actually. Um, just hanging out with my girlfriend. Um, my brother actually just had a baby this afternoon. So I'm a, Ooh, I'm congrats, a uncle. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. I'm an <laughs> uncle now and just exciting times. Everything's, um, moving in slow motion now, but ready to get things, um, picked up and, and, and moving forward. Yeah. How's, how's the, uh, the golden retriever doing? He's hit chance. Yeah. He, he's good. Um, just hanging out. He's getting old. He's getting some white hairs on his chin and his beard, but yeah, he, he's, he's doing all right. <laughs> no, he's nice. He, he's probably ready to, you know, get out there and run again. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. You know, it's, uh, but dude, great to hear that the fam and the girlfriend and everything are going well on your end. Um, we're really excited here at Ike just about your entire game. And it was an absolute privilege to watch you do work at Madison. Um, but more so than anything, it's the story that you kind of, that you had at your, throughout your collegiate career. Like you said, you weren't a guy that was super highly recruited. Yeah. You've kind of, you know, you had a couple injuries when I think that was, was your sophomore year you broke your, it was your second season that you broke your, your, your foot. Um, but then, and then this rise to, you know, one of the best linebackers in the class, all American. And I'm just really excited to see what happens here. So going forward. Um, so really thanks. Thanks again for coming on the show. And we hope we can stay in touch going forward. Oh, and absolutely. wish you nothing but the best of the luck, man. Nothing but the best. Thank you guys for listening to the Ike Badgers podcast. It was a fun episode with Zach Bond. Badgers linebacker. My name is Alex Eichstead, Badger alum. 
And we are going to have more great shows in the future. So make sure to follow us on Twitter, IKE underscore Badgers. Make sure to follow us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, Spotify, wherever you like to listen to your podcast, we're there too. So thanks again. Until next time, I'm Wisconsin. Conversation, energy, culture, stories, and more, while you listen to an audio experience unlike anything else. It's beautiful sound that appeals to the senses. It's information you can use. Interesting guests. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ike. This is an Ike podcast. Hey everyone, it's Ike here, co-founder. We have a great show for you today, kicking off the first episode of the podcast. KJ, myself, Max, and Chris sit down and we talk big ideas, and we're happy you're here. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Ike. My name is KJ Eichstead, I'll be your host, and we're going to get right into it.